Welcome to Physics Office Hours. My name is Eric. This video is all about spin. What is spin? Why did we call particle spin spin? And why do we know it's not spin? If you like physics, if you have any questions about any topic in physics, feel free to stop by my channel, twitch.tv slash physicsoh. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern. We also have a Discord, links to both of those down below. If you have any questions, stop by, ask away. The Discord is filled with plenty of brilliant people who are all physics enthusiasts and will happily answer any questions you have. This video was taken from June 10th, 2020 at that live stream event. We talked about spin and this will be the first part in a three part series that will hopefully be released in the next few days as they are ready. Without any further ado, let's talk about spin. So let's talk about spin. Like, what is spin? What does it look like? Why do we know that it's there? But know that it's also not spin. Um, okay, so how do we know that spin exists? So we can talk about a couple things, a couple intrinsic things that, that particles have, right? Particles have intrinsic... And this is just going to be stuff that we're going to talk about. And uh, like once you go to a quantum mechanics course, you're going to learn a lot more. It's going to be a lot more in depth. But each particle, we can talk about having a few intrinsic things. So we'll say intrinsic, intrinsic properties. What are some intrinsic properties? Did I spell properties, right? Um, if you have followed my channel for a while, I spell things awfully. I just, I'm awful at spelling. Um, in terms of properties, we'll have particles have charge. Particles have mass. Particles have spin. Now, at least these two, when you get high enough, you need to worry about renormalization. You need to worry about bare mass versus bare charge, bare coupling constant. Some would, you know, instead of charge, you would think coupling constants if you are at that level of your uh, classes. But either way, you can rectify that there's some sort of um, that there's some sort of charge and mass that are intrinsically associated with uh, with a, a particle. But now, what if you talk about something spinning? If you just talk about an object spinning, I don't know if I have a ball here. Do I have a ball floating around in here? Uh, I think Darla took all her balls inside. Well, actually, I have this one. I have a, I have a dog chew toy. So if you want to talk about something spinning, you can talk about the spin momentum. The spin angular momentum. I don't know if you guys can see it spinning. It is spinning. Uh, maybe for the sake of demonstration, you can see this one spinning. Ready? See? And oh, I knocked over my water. Um, so there's some sort of spin momentum, but that has nothing to do with the ball, right? The ball is not the thing that's that's has a spin it's the act of putting spin on the ball but in particle physics or in, in just in quantum mechanics in general we know that these fundamental particles that are subjected to that are subject to quantum mechanics have some intrinsic spin well how do we know that well when a particle goes in a magnet magnetic field it experiences a force so either way, spin is a very spin is intrinsic to each particle. Um, we know that it exists because of the idea that of what we talked about with the Stern-Gerlach experiment, right? A particle goes through a Stern-Gerlach experiment. You can uh, we have bonds on this, I think, um, where a particle can go through here and then experience some sort of force. Where there, here is like some sort of magnetic field. It interacts with the magnetic field of the particle. The particle is spinning, so it has a magnetic field. And the fact that it spins and has a magnetic field, we can tell with some sort of certainty whether or not, if we do uh, a large amount of particles, whether or not we'll get spin up 50% of the time, spin down 50% of the time. And we can sort of associate some probabilistic wave function to the particles before they interact with the magnetic field. So the fact that the particles are interacting with the magnetic field means that they have spins. 
There is a magnetic dipole moment of each particle, and some of them, we'll talk more about how that's how we can visualize that in a second, but the electron has a magnetic dipole moment, and it is accu accurate. Auto stirring, yeah, there it is. Um, big <laughs> Um, the, uh, electron has a magnetic dipole moment and is accurate to, I think it's over 12 decimal places or somewhere around 12 decimal places, 12 or 13 decimal places. It's, it's accurate. So it's there, it's measured. And the theoretical prediction is accurate to 12 decimal places. That magnetic, I think that calculation was actually done using quantum, uh, electrodynamics or QED. Stern was Einstein's first postdoc? Is that real? I didn't know that. That's amazing. And then he went on to do the Stern Gerlach thing, which is like, that's like, the Stern Gerlach is crucial to like learning quantum mechanics as an undergraduate. That's amazing. I mean, it, it, it's Stern Gerlach. If you missed it, you should really go back and check out my VODs on Stern Gerlach. Uh, it's really, really interesting. I hope they're still there. I hope I have something up. If not, uh, I might have to redo that at some point. Um, but Stern Gerlach is super interesting and it's all related to the spin. That's kind of how we figured out that these things have spin, right? Uh, so the magnetic moment is due to the spin. So why are we so entrenched on this word spin? Like why? why? We know that it's not spin. We'll talk about why in a minute, but we called it spin because for the, the for the following reasons, right? Let me get some colored chalk out. We're going to have a nice pretty picture today. So say you have a particle. I think the particle should be red. No, I think the part, yeah, I think the particle should be red. I don't know why. I just like red. So say we have a particle, okay? And in that particle, we have some charges. Charges will be yellow. We'll say it's negatively charged. And we'll just say it has some sort of charge density. Not to be confused with a, co a conductor, okay? Now, the particle is spinning on an axis. So let's, let's make it up from a particle. Let's make it a ball. Say you have a charged ball, okay? And it's spinning on an axis like this, right? And it's spinning around, right round, maybe right round. Now, what else, what colors do I have? Oh, I have blue still. Here, you will have charges in motion. Charges in motion are also known as a current. If you have a current, you get a magnetic field. The magnetic field will begin to propagate around like this. And then depending on whether it's spinning clockwise or counterclockwise, let's see, I gotta do the right hand rule because I never remember this. Um, so if it's spinning, Let's see, if it's spinning this way, if it's spinning counterclockwise, it's up. Do I have another, do I have another color? So if it's spinning counterclockwise, it's up. If it's spinning clockwise, it's down. And that's how we justify the spin. We say, if you take a charged ball and you start spinning it, those charges are now in motion, they become currents and those currents have generate a magnetic field that magnetic field it comes up and that's what we call spin like obviously that's what we call it spin because it's like that we that's how that's how the magnetic field is generated is from the charged ball spinning so it makes sense to call it spin here's the problem in the same sense that i'm taking this and spinning it Right? Woo. The same sense I'm taking that and spinning it, or more visually this. Um, we know that the particle is not doing that. Why? Well, there's actually two main reasons why we know that. Firstly, <clears throat> our idea behind this is that it's a charged ball spinning, right? Neutrons. Neutrons are neutral. They have spin. So figure that out, science man. 
our whole argument for generating this magnetic field that's interacting with the stern gerlach is that the neutrons are neutral. So the charges spinning are not generating currents, which are generating magnetic fields. What's another reason? Does anyone know of the other reason, the second reason that I think might be more convincing? Um, that, 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 they, that it can't actually be spinning. But what about relativistic speeds? So at the electron's biggest possible radius, like the largest radius, this is a, I didn't crunch this number, I just found it somewhere. So I'm gonna take it. I found it on the internet so it can't be wrong. It's gotta be right. It's gotta be. Um, but at the largest radius of an electron can be, I think it said 10 to the negative 18 meters, but again, that, that one I'm not sure about. What I am sure about is it was the largest that it was possibly allowed. And it had, in order to get the correct units of, of angular momentum, which you could think of as uh, h-bar. H-bar has units of angular momentum. So you could do the calculation using quantum mechanics relatively quickly. Uh, then you would find that it would spin roughly around 1 million times the speed of light. Uh, that's, that's a prop. That's a problem. I don't, I don't know if you guys know that or not, but it's actually a problem. Like you can't do that. You're not supposed to be able to travel faster than the speed of light. But at electrons largest radius, in order to get the correct number with the units, it would be 1 million times. It would be traveling at 1 million times the speed of light. Even if that calculation's off by a little bit, I mean, you got some wiggle room. Uh, and that's just kind of like unbelievable to me that that's, that that's actually stopping. It's stopping. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a physical condition. That's not allowing you to spin that fast on top of that. It would be the radiated energy thing, which I think would have some pretty bad consequences if it radiated energy, right? There is like, a, there's a, another solution to that about how it, how, um, about something about the instability of an electron in orbit because it should be radiating energy and it's not. Oh jeez, scared me. I got bees. We got bees. Oh. Oh jeez. <laughs> Go away. Be still, my heart. Get it? Be still, my heart. Yeah, there it is. That's the one, Justin. That's the one that I was thinking of. If it radiates energy, the orbital radius decreases and it would crash into the nucleus, which it doesn't. It's a stable orbit. So that's a big pro that's a, that's another problem. Um, no, I like bees and they don't bother me. The wasps bother me. I haven't gotten stung yet this year, but I probably will be. I probably will before the year's over. All right, so what do we do with all this, right? Uh, we know that if it was actually spinning... It would have it would have some radiating energy that would be an issue. It would have uh, neutral neutral particles actually spin. The particle that is done using the Stern Gerlach experiment is silver, and silver is neutral unless it's ionized. Look at I'm not doing chemistry, so if I said that wrong, it's not my fault. Okay, I it's not my fault. Um, but silver was definitely used for the Stern Gerlach, so I'm assuming. That's okay. Uh, so what do we do with this, right? We know that spin, we can give it, we can give it some direction. We can call spin has, a, spin is an actual true vector. Vector being it has a magnitude and it has a direction, which is something that can come in handy, but we don't really know what to do with it, especially since the, the especially since the magnitude of it is quantized, right? It's not like, uh, a like if I spin the ball it I could spin it as fast or as slow as I want right it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be I have a, it doesn't have to have a certain momentum right if I spin it at I could spin it at uh, I don't know what's a fast speed uh, one radian per second or I could spin it at 1.1 radian per second or I could spin it at you know 1.2 radian per second whereas in quantum mechanics if a particle is spinning, it has to, if it's a fermion, like an electron, then it has to spin at half integers of H bar. If it's a boson, then it has to spin <laughs> at, uh, then it has to spin at a integers of H bar. So 
I mean, like, not only... That's another reason why we think we know it's intrinsic. It's because it has to be a set, quant a quantized value. Uh...